Hello, welcome back to The Division. And my review of the game. Um, this is post doing the three videos that I had to do again for Murray Hill, so... Turn that into consideration. Uh, it is actually roughly about a month or so since I finished playing the game when I really, really enjoyed it. So, yeah. <laughs> what we're going to do, head in on this one. The hell was that? That's what that is. Did not know. <laughs> this goes to show what I'm looking at. Continue game. There we go. So yeah, what I'm going to do is go through some of the major things that I found with the game uh, that I think impact um, your experience of the division itself. And that comes under a couple of different instances. Um, game world, population. Overall design of how it appeared to be and how it actually turned out to be. And um, the enemies within it. And then we'll get onto another couple of other things that, that I feel are relatively big. But. You are now entering a safe area. Right. Warning. You are now leaving the safe area. So, yeah. Now that we're... Able to die, I saw some. Oh no, it's just that. How long has that one been down there? Tango inbound! Get that AO under the floor! Yeah, that's the thing that's just come to the game. Loadouts. Do not pick a loadout. Do not save a loadout. Do not do anything with loadouts while you're leveling. Because you can't delete shit. They're useful. But you have to delete the loadout and go from scratch again with what you've got and accept uh, and uh, okay I don't want to save the loader that's the point okay so my gear score is 197 so, yeah, things that I liked about the game, the game world, it rocks. It really does. It is the one of the most um, engaging games for a game world that I've experienced since Assassin's Creed 2. And that's saying something for me, because 
Uh, you've played uh, Assassin's Creed, Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2, uh, Mass Effect 3, <laughs> Elder Scrolls, um, Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim, a little bit of Elder Scrolls Online, but not too much. I really need to get back into that. And a crap ton of other games, but this game's game world is really nice. Not uh, not the best that I've ever played, but really nice, and perhaps one of the nicest that I've seen since AC2. Um, personally, I actually think that uh, the game world that they came up with for Assassin's Creed Unity is perhaps one of the most stunningly beautiful game worlds that I've ever seen. Unfortunately, that game suffers from a whole heap of shit that, that you, d you just don't notice how good the game, game world actually is. Right, it's fast travel. Um, That's the problem I've got with the game. Loading time for moving. Sucks balls, but it is what it is. Um, the overall feel of the game, the music in it is great, the graphics are fantastic, the game world itself is interestingly different from most others it does have and i have said this many times before it feels like i'm playing prototype without the superpowers it really does feel like i'm playing as hella pre prototype it really does and i'm surprised that they they didn't feature um i mean you've got the cleaners the rioters the rikers and the lmb i am I was actually really, really surprised when I actually started playing this, and I didn't come across, you know, like freakers uh, or the um, uh, mollusk heads that you get in um, The Last of Us, or just plain, you know, like the the monsters that they have in Prototype. I'm actually really surprised that there there aren't actually violently. Uh, no, I don't want to say it sort of that, but. Um, deranged sick people if that makes any sort of sense uh, people that are uh, the only way I can describe it is um, it, almost like the guy at the back side of Alien Resurrection you can shoot him full of an entire magazine and he won't go down because he's about to you know splurge <laughs> uh, oh, I forget what his name is, but he's he's been in a crap ton of stuff. But Star Trek, The Bone Collector, and oh god, just everywhere. Uh, what the hell was that guy's name? That's gonna bug me now. Um, but yeah, I'm actually really really surprised that we didn't fi uh, get get that as an actual feature, uh, as a NPC that we go up against. Alien Resurrection. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Freeze. Cardadon. Uh, Red Dorif. Leland also. Purvis. That's the guy. The guy who births the alien right at the back side of the movie. But. Yeah, it, it's interesting um, that, we, that we didn't get that, but I'll, I'll get on to the bad points about the NPCs later. Are you okay? Um, options, abilities. Yeah, I know we've got signature skills. Thank you. Can you stop telling me. Um. It would have been nice to, I don't know, 
I know it's a really strange thing to request from an MMO that's set during Black Friday for it to actually reflect the season real world. If that makes any sort of sense, uh, uh, deal with this as being uh, a world which evolves over time and becomes, you know, like ours almost. But the chances of that actually happening are slim to none. Let's see if I can actually get myself a new um, package. Um, weapon types that you get throughout the game are really, really cool. You get loads of different kinds. You get, um, what have we got? Auto rifles, which I prefer. Thank you. I know about gear score. Jeez. Um, auto rifles, auto rifle, assault rifle. Uh, submachine guns, they're kind of cool. Marksman rifles, uh, they are kind of, they are very, very cool. I like those a lot. Uh, you get your sidearms, shotguns, um, all that sort of jazz. And it, it's it's nice. Uh, Chelsea? 32? 32, 32? Readings indicate an echo nearby. Really? What player bracket am I in? Oh, I can actually go to tier 4. No, I'm, I'm quite happy where I am. Thank you. So, yeah. An LMG, uh, the other rifle type, which I actually do quite like a lot, but I don't need here. Um, gear score, uh, well, the gears that you can pick up, uh, as you can tell, I've got Best of the Nomad. Uh, so I'm actually wearing uh, Path of the Nomad stuff, uh, so much so that I've actually got the four piece bonus, so yay. We may get that new box, I don't know. The characters that you meet through the game, I actually really, really feel engaged with um, with Faye and all of the other people that you meet, especially Rose, she's just funny. But uh, the vast majority of people that you're gonna meet, they're, they are NPCs, unfortunately, so uh, you are going to meet a lot of people that you just don't do anything with, unfortunately. Let's not put that in there. Not that I use ballistic shield, but might as well put that in there. So, that was easy. Yeah. Cold. So you, you don't really get that much investment in, in the store. I mean, they try to do that with the NPCs that you go up against the bounty targets. Yeah, it's actually quite an interesting uh, piece of law whenever you're going up against, uh, against them because you know that they're bad dudes from that area, but that's pretty much it, really. Um, 
as I said, the sound design is actually really cool. The graphics, the fire damage graphics that you get in this game are perhaps some of the nicest I've seen in a long time. I mean, look at that. Look how pretty. Look how pretty. And the light blooms that you can get when you get in the direction of the sun, which is facing this way. But watch. I can get it so that it's right. It, it, look at that. It's just, it's, it's such a beautifully rendered game. It really is. And gives me a lot of hope for what this company can produce when it does the Avatar game. That sounds cool. Keep saying it, short control burst, and I never do it. <laughs> uh. But the the uh, uh, and that's pretty much the best parts about the game: the uh, the graphics, the way it looks, uh, the gunplay is. It's actually okay and it, it, it's really well rendered and yeah no worries there but there's a lot of other things which are really wrong with this game and that's quite sad now to come back to explaining oh god Assassin's Creed Unity it is quite honestly one of the games that I look at as to as a benchmark of what uh, connectivity promises and then breakings uh, and then the breaking of those promises actually are it's like the the new fable if that makes any sort of sense uh, we were promised a game which had the ability to connect in the clubs we didn't get that we were promised a game which had the potential to have co-op running through the game we didn't get that but this game however did do that to a point uh, you can meet each other meet each other in the safe houses and their shared spaces uh, but go out in the world yourself and you are by yourself, that is it. If you want to meet up with anyone, group up with them and only play through the content that you've got in your world, if you play it in your world. If you go to theirs, you're playing it in their setup. So just be aware of that. And that's all well and good for a lot of content, but I don't know. Let's take a walk. Um, it plays really well. And the connectivity of it and the grouping, it works perfectly. Exactly as you'd expect it to. And exactly as Assassin's Creed Unity promised that it would, but didn't deliver. So at least that's one Ubisoft game which actually keeps a promise that it, it delivers on. Go. 
go. we got the extra bit and um, oh, so there's that end game content as it comes to it 31,075 is okay you've got a decent variety as you just seen of, of weaponry that you can pick through uh, if you don't want to do any of the content you just want to come on and doss around and do whatever I'm like me at the minute yeah you cool doing that uh, it would be nice if I could get that with a little bit more armor on it, but yeah, I'm I'm happy with what I've got. Open. Let's have a look. Sixty-two. Oh, if only that was just a little bit more damage on it, I'd have picked it. Because I prefer the bullpup rifles like, like this one, um, but I'm not going to swap out my Caduceus. No way. <laughs> it's too good. That one. Yeah, and no, 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 And that one too. Remember, the last, last man battalion cannot, cannot guarantee, guarantee your safety if you violate curfew. curfew. For your own protection, stay inside after dark. So, you do get quite a lot of extra gear and, and all sorts of extra bits that you can do um, as you play through. Now, where it goes a little bit hinky for me is... For me, I like to run multiple characters, as you can tell. Um, I, and I really do. Um, I, I feel that that's where you get the, the absolute best meat and potatoes out, out of a new game, or any game for that matter. Yeah, I do. Um, but this game... Um, <laughs> I've had, let me see, my main character which I created, which actually is the first character that I created, the first dude, uh, I had the second dude, the lady, not this one, another one, another dude, this lady, and then the last dude, so I've ran six characters. And out of those six, I think I've done all of the content on three of them and up to Murray Hill on virtually all of them. No, no on five of them. Oh, let's see. No. Main dude, this girl, and the other guy, and no, only four of them I've taken. Uh, Four of the, three of them I've taken through all the content and four of them I've taken as far as Murray Hill. One guy was just a backup and one guy got deleted practically straight away. Um, but there ain't a great deal of replayability, unfortunately. You can't, um, how do I say this? You don't really get any benefit from running a character through and then taking another one through aside from having a bank that's it if you want to run a character through it's a chore that's the nicest way I can describe running multiple characters through this game it is a mind numbing chore taking one character through is actually really quite fun 
but you uh, you only really understand how to get the best out of this game on your second, which is actually this one. Ironically, my fourth character, but only the second which I've taken so far. And I purposely created her to get all of the intel packages, which I did after I actually completed the game. And once I'd done that, I got I die I I've I've lost count on how many proficiency caches I got. Just collecting up all the intel packages with her, it was about thirty ish. Definitely worth leaving the intel until you've done everything else. You can collect there are some echoes that you're supposed to collect as you're going through. There's about three of them, which you can't miss, unfortunately. But the rest of them, leave until later. Get the K9 unit that you need to get the intel on your map. You can even leave that until you've actually got a little bit further in. Get your um, blue, green, and yellow. Uh, by that, I mean get your blue, uh, green, yellow, blue links at the bottom. Work towards getting those, and you can get the rest. Um, once you've uh, once you've got all of that, then get the other perks, and you, you'll be fine. Once you've got the K9 unit, you'll see every echo on the on, and phone, and yeah, there's quite a lot. Uh, that is a good thing, actually. There is a lot. If you're like me, a collectible fan, there is a lot to collect in this game, and it's pretty involved. Uh, getting uh, some of the extra bits done to get all of the intel. Um, yeah, some of them are actually quest chains. So, uh, some of the side quests provide you echoes, which are actually collectibles. So uh, th that I actually like. Weaving the collectibles into and out of the main story is inspired. You don't see that in many other games. It coll the collectible stuff is just extra padding uh, which they put into games for people like me to play through because you burn through everything else so fast uh, like if you play through games the way that I do all side quests or get to the point where I can actually open and do all the side quests and stop the main quest dead and after that then go forward and do the main quest once all of the extra side quest stuff is done uh, you can get a game done in about a week if you if you really burn through it really 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 quick even doing a hundred percent you could probably get it done in about three or four days depends on how fast you do shit uh, if it's a game like DC Universe Online and you want to get all of the side quests done that's just part of the parcel of doing the game but getting the collectibles done that took weeks if not months just the base game this game uh, I'd say each district took about an hour to do the intel for each and there's what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and I've not even gone into the dark zone yet to find out all the extra bits that are in there and there are extra little bits in there as well, which I'm not even going to go anywhere near because I don't want to. Because there ain't a great deal of replayability in the game once you get to the point that I'm at. That's the thing that I'm actually stuck at. I've done everything that I want to do with the game and there ain't no much. There isn't anything else that I really want to do in it. Which is really quite sad because it's a fantastic game. Um, but once, you, once you've done everything, uh, now how to describe it, um, if it was me and I was developing this and I, I thought, well, you're more than likely going to get the occasional person, because you provide you provided with four character slots, do not operate more than two. Before, because you, you're given four character slots, I don't know why they just didn't focus on one, but you're given four, why don't you just give us a bonus? such as like they do for the tempering buff that they do for Destiny's Iron Banner tournament. If you play that, you'll know what I mean. Um, as you go through, if you take a character through to level 30, like you max everything out and 
uh, you, you take a character to full reputation, in this game that will basically be getting to max level, then any other character that you get through has a buff applied, which increases the, the experience to the extent where the fourth character just blitzes through the game and uh, you can get to level 30 by the time that you've, you're you halfway round and the rest of the game is just a breeze. Why is that not in here? It would make playing this game uh, on an alt actually enjoyable. Did, doing the game the first way uh, on the first character, ponderous, that's fine. Second character, a little bit quicker because you understand the game, it's bound to be anyway. But third character, when you're playing through just for shits and giggles, and you're probably just bringing up your rogue that you're only ever going to uh, use in a dark zone, that's fine. And then you've got the character which you're probably going to use for extra things. But they've got a, they've got rid of the ability to do that because of what they've just brought in. They've essentially made it so that there is no point in any way, shape or form in having more than one character because of that. Loadouts basically mean all you need to do is just run one character and save all of your shit. Put it all in the stash and if you get anything better that you think might fit with that loadout, pull all of that stuff back out of the stash and away you go. Job done. And you don't need to do anything else other than just tweak a bit. Single-handedly killed the ability to have an alt. That one little page. It's a really nifty little update, and I'm I'm not bashing them for doing that, but it's basically killed off the ability to have an alt, or the incentive to have an alt, in just doing that one little thing. I I like the ability of having a, um, characters locked to being a specific type, like the Titan, like the Hunter, like the Warlock. Um, I don't I still don't understand why they just didn't bring out. Titan is the tank or DPS, Warlock is the mage or DPS, Hunter is the sniper or just stupid DPS, so basically a glass cannon. But why they didn't make it so that you've got tank, healer, skill, I will never know. This game did. It's, it, it's, it, it's in the abilities, you've got tank, DPS, healer. Why there isn't a healer class in Destiny, I will never know, because it, it seems to be a game that what you would actually think with it with a character called Warlock, you would expect that to be in there, but it's not. But that, that's another matter for another discussion, another day. That's not today. But, yeah. And that's the lens with the... Oh, the other thing I was going to talk about. Um, the NPCs that you go up against... Um, again, they don't feature the freakers or, or the, the crazed, as I would call them, uh, the sick people, basically. You don't see any sick people. What, are they all dead? They're bound to be a couple of people that are still uh, susceptible. I mean, if, if you have um, a viral, viral epidemic or pandemic of this proportions, there won't just be one virus. There will there will be multiple copies of it because they would have it would have um, mutated, and essentially it would. If you've ever played Plague on on the iPhone, you'll know what I mean. It'll kill everyone, quite literally everyone, unless uh, there is a uh, vaccine developed to counteract it. But even then, you're still going to kill everyone. This game. I don't understand why they're all crazed or the crazed. It, they could quite honestly be the stiffest people that you could. They could have been in the underground. It would have been perfect to have a new faction specifically only in the underground instead of going up yet again cleaners, writers, LMB. But. You do, unfortunately, because it is a computer game and you get the, uh, uh, there is a limited amount of memory in what you can do, 
that it falls victim to let's have four different archetypes and that's it and that is pretty much what you've got some characters that you go up against if you're just playing the base game uh, you're gonna go up against basic cannon fodder which have got pistols uh, or uh, assault rifles you're gonna go up against snipers who are bitches I hate them with a passion <laughs> and more often than not they do actually tend to be women um, you get grenadiers who are complete assholes and you get rushers who come at you with either axes or shotguns depends on which faction you're going up against but that's basically it oh and the big uh, big heavy dudes that's five different character archetypes that you'll come up against but then you've also got the shielded dudes who are more often than not kind of sort of a bit like but not quite your character you, you there are a couple of people in the cleaners that that basically have turrets you pop out your turret and they'll shoot you but uh, that's it you do at the end of the game come up against people that are basically um, you but it would have been nicer and it really would have been but it, again this is this comes back to the, the the story it would have been nicer to come up against a little bit more challenging people as main end bosses than just basically bullet sponges a la destiny but going back to the main story a lot of people bitched and moaned about the story actually ending the way that it did in this game. I, I understand why it did and it fits. For me, that's fine. What I would have liked to have seen would have been more involvement from the uh, first wave. For me. So, maybe involve them a little bit more, maybe have more... Uh, division or rogue division agents coming up against you than we actually got as we're going through the game that would have been really cool but we got what we got unfortunately so you can only go with what you get and again there is only so much space that you've got on on a disc that, or, or on the disc and that the game can process I mean this game actually pushes the PS4 pretty damn hard I'm not, I'm not kidding it just pushed the, uh, pushed the PS4 pretty damn hard Xbox One, I mean, it must be creaking at the seams. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Xbox. Um, but for me, it's a really good game with a couple of really bad points. Um, there, a lot of people call this a flawed masterpiece. Yeah, yeah, that fits. Because sometimes you get on this game and you just... As soon as you turn it on, you want to turn it off. I don't... You don't very often get games like that, but you just keep on playing at it anyway. Uh, uh, and then you get the occasional day when you come on and it's just great and everything works. But occasionally there's that one or two days, which never should have happened the way that it does. And as soon as you turn it on, you want to turn it off. But that, that's just me. Um, score that I give this game out of 10. A six. It's graphically really cool. You get a lot of uh, of customization to your character, sort of. Essentially, your character is pretty much just going to look the same, irrespective of whatever you do to it. Unless, uh, if you put a jacket on, it does change. If, like me, you're running with characters that look the same the same way pretty much all the time because I actually want to have them looking like a same sort of character type then they look the same the only thing that will change is the individual gear pieces so the backpack the chest piece the sidearm holster and that's it really Oh yeah, knee pads. Everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, she's actually my best best gear character, I believe. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they look 
practically identical. If it was the same character type, i.e. the same dude, it would look the same. Aside from a couple of different uh, armor pieces being slightly different, but they, they would essentially look the same. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's okay, there, there isn't a great deal of fundamental customization to your character, but there is a deal of customization to your character, so it's better than nothing. Uh, the, the replayability or lack of replayability, now that they've brought in those loadouts, that's what's really done it for me. As soon as I saw that, I thought, why? Because it, it just killed every little bit of enthusiasm I had to get that one character all the way up to Murray Hill to play through that bit and record that bit for you. It just left me with a really bad taste in the mouth as soon as I saw that. And yeah, it's not cool. It, 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 it <sighs> yeah. Um, the weapons and the customization and the weaponry is really cool. Um, the the mods that you can apply to your character to to improve and change the way that your character behaves, um, and by mods I mean uh, the the mods to individual powers. So you can actually use the abilities that you've got and the skills that you've got in very inventive ways if you want. Uh, the mods that you've got in individual gear pieces, they just change and tweak a couple of extra little bits here and there. But um, yeah, they're, they're really cool. Um, there's not really a great deal more that I can really talk about in the game, really, because I've pretty much covered everything from sound design through to level structures, kind of cool. Um, you get the occasional bits where you're going underground, you get the occasional bits where you're going overground, you get the occasional bits where you're going up in the world. Uh, so you've got some re a real sense of space and uh, 3D perception into the levels, and that's good. You don't get that in a lot of games, and the, the way that they've done it here, yeah. But for me, and as I, I say this with all the um, experience of being someone that's played through a live beta, as in DC Universe Online, pre, uh, pre, I would say, when that game came out of beta was when they issued War of the Light Part 2, ish. Um, this game feels like a beta to me, it, if, a very, very polished but and very final beta for what they're going to do with the next game along. If makes any sort of sense, um, because I, we, we now know that there are developers, which is basically going to be like this, but just imagine this being in the world of Avatar. I can't wait for that. It's going to be cool, but it says a lot about this game that, on the strength of this, that that game is being developed, and that is good for the studio. It really is. But I've just I've really lost all enthusiasm to even go back to just dossing around in this game. So unfortunately, this game is not staying on my PS4. It's being deleted practically immediately because I just I've just don't have the enthusiasm to to play it anymore. Which is is kind of sad because I mean I, Destiny's been on my console since I first got it. It came off for a little bit, but once Rise of Iron came back, it's been on, non-stop. Uh, do I play it the way that I want to? No. Do I just come on and doss around on the game? Yeah. This is exactly what should be happening with this, but because of what they've done, it's just, uh, for me, I like running alter alternate characters, and that's what's now dead. There's no reason to run an alt, and that's that's really, pissed me off not uh, no end it really 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 has so yeah I'm gonna leave this here and I will come back to you with more content there is definitely definitely more content coming to my channel in a very very near future so 
as soon as the division as soon as this video goes live my next game is coming out either today or the next day and it's a doozy so keep tuning back for that and I shall see you next time so thank you for watching uh, thank you for watching my review of quite frankly one of the most interestingly okay-ish but sort of bad games I've ever played in my life it's it's great it's bad it's it's interestingly it's dull it's meticulous it's it's a 50 50 game I swear to God for everything that's good about this game there is something bad about it too and it should not be like that. It really shouldn't. But it's just... <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I have actually really enjoyed playing through this game on this character and my previous one. But not the latest one. Because of what they've done with the loadouts. And only because of that. But other things as well. There's the, there are some issues with um, NPC spawning... Uh, lag there is a really bad case of lag on this game at the minute so something needs to happen with the servers for this and it needs to happen pretty damn quick but other than that uh, yeah so yeah six uh, uh, even that's a little bit generous for me five and a half out of ten it's a great game to play it leans more towards being a good game than a bad game but it ain't that good unfortunately anyway <sighs> let's hope the next game that they actually crack out learns from this and becomes what this game should have been in the first place but this game did one thing right every single bit of lore or extra details that are in this game is in the game you can look at echoes, you can look at incident reports, you can look at every single bit of law pertaining to this game without going outside of it to a separate website to read the grimoire cards. That in itself is why this game is better than Destiny. Just for that. But it still ain't that in comparing to Destiny, no. Nah. It, get, it gets that right, but not a lot else. Uh, there's the, the, again beautiful looking really good I mean it's, it kind of sums up exactly the same as what you get with Assassin's Creed Unity it looks really good it plays really okay sometimes uh, a lot of times you're going to get frustrated by really dodgy NPC actions uh, the enemies that you are going to come up against are kind of the same and follow the same sort of tracks every single time apart from the odd one or two when you get swarmed and that's what really pisses you off. But other than that, it, it's okay. It's not great, it's not bad, it's not anywhere really. It's just meh. So, yeah. That's it from me and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.